Now I want to talk about the new volume shading options in Arnold. At the moment I am in Houdini because in here I created this little fire simulation. I will quickly walk you through the process. In the end, um, it's very simple for this presentation, but I'll walk you through it. So I've got my little sphere here that consists of a couple of points. And on this on the sphere, essentially I have some uh, velocity attributes that are kind of changing like that. And then based on that, I'm creating a pop sim, which is, a, is a, essentially a particle simulation that will drive the density and the kind of the fuel for the simulation um, of the pyro. And you can see here is my variance for temperature and all of that. And that is then cached out to a pyro source that has velocity fields, density fields, and temperature fields. And these guys feed directly into the pyro solver. And then I have a couple of parameters, obviously, and here's um, increased uh, max sub steps. Then I broken up the shape. So I get uh, disturbance and turbulence on the velocity fields to make them more good looking. And then in the end, I'm caching everything out to VDB. You can see that is my raw VDB simulation and it kind of produces a fire. I've got my pyro bake, which is a better representation of the final look. And you can obviously play with the density, the temperature, all of that within the shader. And you can see it's hitting a collision object here that is just kind of a sphere at the moment. And it kind of wraps around that object. Anyways, then I, you can see I cached this out to a VDB and now I just want to show you how to deal with that, uh, let's say in Maya, for instance, using Arnold as well. So now we are in Maya and I use the Arnold volume node that is essentially a procedural where you can put in your volume fields and for the, it asks then which fields you want to bring in and I, for this sake I want to bring in density and temperature and I have a velocity field for motion blur that is called VEL. You can obviously increase the velocity scale which kind of blurs things more or less and then I just have that in here. So the basic process would be I create a new material, I can work in the hypershade or in the look dev X. So in here I will be creating the standard volume and then I'm selecting my volume object and I'm just assigning that to my selection. If I render now, I can scrub a little bit and you can see this is now a basic volume shader applied. And as you can see as well, we are denoising at the same time. We can maybe increase the resolution to 150 so it's a little bit sharper. But yeah, you can see that if I scrub that it is updating and it's pretty pretty interactive. So now let's talk about the volume shader itself. If I bring up um, the volume object, you can also display the materials in here. We can just find it in here. So that's my standard volume. I can obviously play with the density, with the density color. I do have a directional light as well. For this kind of effect, I do want the density, the kind of the the smoke to be dark, it's kind of a fuel burning. So I'm just darkening that down pretty much. So that's kind of a very dark, let's see what value we have, 0 0.29, let's go maybe 0.1. So that is my darkest volume. I do have the direction light that puts some, some light into the scene as well. You can see that on my, on my reflection sphere. At the moment, it's just a very standard uh, directional light. And now let's, work with the shader itself. So previously you had different options. Um, you could either read the temperature channel using channel and then connect a a color ramp in here, similar as you had in Houdini temperature. And then you would ramp it and in Houdini it would look like this the same way. So based on, you see this is now pulling in the temperature field and based on that, it would kind of remap the colors. But there's a new method now, which is um, you can use the black body mode, which has been there before. But now there's a new method using opacity or ther thermodynamic scaling. And that kind of is a more realistic way how the temperature is generated or passed through the volume. 
can already see by just enabling that it kind of feels already way more like a firebulb hitting hitting the surface obviously now you can play a lot with the temperature uh, the emission weight and that's something i always like to play with so if you increase the kind of the the heat the temperature um yeah value then you get a very hot flame and this already looks pretty good and if you ask me you can then play as usual with the kelvin values this is just fine tuning it and you can have contrast that kind of mimics some kind of fire scattering you can see how it kind of bleeds i always like to reduce it a little bit so it feels like the volume is being scattering through it a little bit more and if you want to have more of the density more volume you could increase that and you get a more co contrasty look you can see now how we get really this nice and black suit smoke and that is because we push the density up and we also put it like a dark value if i reduce density again you can see it gets very soft looking but again this is a creative method is it depends really what you uh, want to do here um, and another thing which is new which is scatter diffusion it is more apparent in lighter density fields like clouds and like magical smoke and whatnot but you would increase uh, first of all you would need to go to your render settings and enable at least one um, volume depth this will help the temperature to traverse through the density fields and kind of make this more glowy, more luminous. And then you would boost up the diffusion uh, values here. And then you can already see that our volume gets more lit up. As I said, it's, it's more apparent when you have lighter color values. But I will show you another example with a cloud where it's uh, way more obvious. But again, you can then play with the bias and the diffusion gain to really push these, these values and get the desired look. And now we can also use the motion blur. So at the moment, as I said, we do have the motion blur field pulled in, but it's, uh, let's see if it's actually on and now we enable it. And now we should see um, in fast moving objects. You can already see how it's kind of smearing where it's fast mo uh, moving and we have these twirls and you can see it here pretty well that there's some kind of motion going on and you can obviously as i said before ex exaggerate the effect by let's say increasing the velocity scale to 10 and you should see now so it's resampling it's you can see it's updating the fields how it now really is motion blurred and you can actually see what's going on so obviously way too much but yeah it just shows that you have quite a lot of control and yeah, the cool thing is you can now, for instance, export that shader as a USD shader using LookDevX, bring that back into your rendering application. Let's say it's Houdini or it's uh, Katana or Gaffer or Maya and load it as a USD shader. And then it's all working together fairly nicely. And the cool thing is um, it's pretty interactive. It's loading uh, rather fast and you get good results.